Hello, everyone, Rand here, and welcome to another episode of uh, Taking Crap Apart here with R.D. Allen. Uh, today, we got a Sony, let's see what's here. This is a Sony DN1040, no, STR DN1040, I think. I think I got the part number right on that. So, a Sony STR DN1040. Uh, what's wrong with this unit, everyone, is the on-screen menus, uh, graphical interfaces do not work. So the, the unit works as far as like speakers, stuff like that goes, everyone. You can configure everything via the menu on this screen, but there's also supposed to be a menu system on the TV that you can configure stuff through. I mean, that does not work. Also, like if you bring up like the home screen for the receiver, that doesn't work. So anything related graphically speaking to the receiver does not work. Um, video and stuff like that passes through just fine. And so we got, you know, like if I plug, say, a Blu-ray player into this, everyone, the Blu-ray passes through to the TV. That's just fine. Uh, it's the graphical interface from, oh, good example, so gonna, like if you turn up sound. So if I go to turn up the sound on here, you, you'd like to see the, you know, the bar with the sound being turned up. That does not work on this receiver. And actually, right down here, it shows you like this is what the home screen is supposed to look like. That does not work. And then, of course, like I was saying too, everyone, if you bring up the, the menu, like you're going to configure this unit, uh, that does not work either. Uh, one of the uh, suggested solutions for that was to clean the unit. Now, just looking inside them, I mean, the unit looks relatively clean, so to be honest, I don't think that's going to work. But hey, I've never taken one of these apart. I don't know how many of you watch and have, but we're going to give it a try, see what happens here. I, I figure it's worth a try. I'm going to take it apart, we'll clean it, blow it out. Uh, see if there's anything interesting in there. I mean, I'm sure it's going to be interesting because, I mean, uh, <laughs> it looks quite impressive from the back, right? So I'm kind of curious to see what's what's in here. So we'll get this uh, taken apart. Looks like a couple screws on the side here. Figure out how this front bezel comes off. Try not to break anything if we can help it. Because, again, like I said, it does work, everyone. It, it's just none of the graphical interfaces work, which is kind of annoying. Okay, for starters, it looks like we got a couple of screws here and then a bunch of screws around the outside edge here, and hopefully we can lift this metal cover off. We'll find out here. So we'll get those taken out. Well, everyone, we have the unit open here, and as you can see, it's not very dirty inside. In fact, I would say it is very, very clean inside here. It is a lot of fun looking at all the gizmos and doohickeys and whatchamacallits in here, though. I'm not exactly sure what all of this is. Obviously, it looks like the bottom board is for analog and speakers, everyone, and this top board, this is probably the culprit board, I'm guessing here, is our HDMI board, all the HDMI ports and ins and outs and... Uh, I'm thinking that is supposed to be maybe a heat sink, everyone. That is the strangest looking heat sink I've ever seen, if that's what that is. It's just like a metal tray. And there is some sort of IC chip under there. Uh, so there's something under there. Uh, this, uh, let's see what's here. Then I'm guessing everyone is our Wi-Fi board there, because that's got the antenna. Uh, that is the one of the things that you cannot access here. The Wi-Fi is all on screen, everyone. That is something you cannot access via the front panel screen, so... Wi-Fi, yeah, without the GUI working on one, the Wi-Fi, I mean, obviously it works, you just don't have a way of configuring it. Um, also looks like probably, I'm guessing, the Bluetooth up in that one. Antenna connection, I'm not sure what this one is here. No idea. And then what else do we got here? Anything else interesting? Not sure what that is. Probably some sort of power board. Obviously, great big old transformer there. I mean, we're not going to stick our finger in that. And yeah, look at the size of those capacitors down there, eh? Whew. Those are some big, big capacitors. So anyway, I think what I'm going to do, everyone, uh, we're just going to blow it off here. Like I said, it's relatively clean. And then I'm probably going to go through and just take all the connections out, take them out, plug them back in, just make sure we're making good connection, everyone. I don't think that's going to help, but I'm at least going to try it, everyone. And then I think we're going to button this back up, close it up. Uh, we'll hook it up, see if it made any differences. I doubt it. Oh, interesting. One other thing, too, I noticed, someone Like there's an HDMI port on the board here. HDMI port. Uh, that, I'm guessing, goes to the front panel uh, connector down there's a front panel HDMI in there and I'm guessing that's what that is for
a moment of truth here. Unit is back together. Got it hooked up to the TV here. Let's see what happens when we turn it on. I'm not expecting great things here, by the way. Oh, power would help. Now let's turn it on. Nothing yet. Oh, there we go. It's doing something. Okay, when the unit is finally uh, started up here, and this is all we get, just the uh, blue box there, which is probably supposed to be highlighting something, because on the remote here, if I go up and down on the remote, you can see it uh, changes. Now, what we're selecting and clicking on that one, I have no idea. Um, I think if we do that. Yeah, see, now it brings us back to some other stuff here, which does the hat. I did. No idea, Evan. No idea. I, I, I actually probably better just get out of this. I don't know what we're doing, Evan, to be honest. We're probably clicking stuff we don't need to be clicking on. So let's do... If I do home. I don't know if it'll let me do that here or not. Oh, whoops. Turn that one back off. The, uh, the remote, Evan, turns on. actually works with both receivers here. Okay, rebooted the unit, everyone, and now we have the uh, screen up here. I don't know why it's uh, flickering like that. That's kind of weird. I think that might have something to do with the lights up there. But anyway, it's back up, cleared the uh, menu there. And, of course, I'm, actually, I think if we we turn up the sound, nope, that's not doing it. Okay, sometimes when you turn up the sound, I mean, you'll see, like, the bar along the bottom, but it's just like a bar. I'm not seeing that right at the moment, so I'm not sure what's up with that. Uh, anyway, again, I mean, you can configure it here going through that menu here and... Yeah, you can configure it this way, but you can only configure... Well, you can configure most things. You, you just cannot uh, configure the Wi-Fi as far as I know. So, anyway, I think that's going to do it for this video. Uh, no uh, success here on getting the GUI to work on this uh, unit. Uh, the graphical interface, just, yeah, I don't know what's wrong with that, everyone. Um, I did look online, by the way, to see if you can get another one of these boards. Uh, you possibly you can have one, but I don't know if it would be worth it. And to be honest, like I said, the unit does work like it is. You just don't have some of the... Uh, home menu options and of course you can't configure it on the graphical menu you have to do it through this screen which uh, yeah if you got the manual oven it's it's definitely doable anyway i think that's like i said gonna do it for this video oven um if you do want to repair your unit i will put a link down below in the description there there is a place that apparently does repair these uh, i will put that information down below in case you're curious so with that everyone thanks for watching uh, if you have any other comments or questions about this be sure to uh, leave them down below and till next time